going on, everybody? Welcome into this edition of War Chant TV. I'm Aslan Hajavandi. Hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to our YouTube page. You don't want to miss on anything that we are cranking out over at WarChant.com, and especially here on War Chant TV, where War Chant lives on YouTube. I am joined by Dallin Cuff. He is a jack of all trades, but I think you probably have a PhD when it comes to basketball. He is one of the great analysts over at ESPN as well as the ACC Network. Dallin, for you, I know basketball is your thing. You're obviously a four-year letterman at Columbia University. How excited are you uh, to get back courtside to something that resembles normal once again? I don't think it's just going to somewhat resemble normal. I think it's going to be about as close to normal as we can get. Now, I know there's still protocols and still different schools and states will do different things, but I I'm pumped, man. I, I do think last year was awesome. We got to have a season, but it was devoid of mo emotion. And for us, too, you're calling it my basement was not exactly the most exciting place to be. And it was really, it was, it was weird. You felt disconnected. There becomes a rhythm to a, as somebody calling the games, just like playing the games of preparing for your game, going to the game, going to shoot around, gleaning those insights, feeling the energy of the crowd, laying out, which you know, my boss is telling me, you know, less is more. I tend to talk quite a bit. But when the, when the crowd is cheering, they're filling that space. All that was gone last year. And it just, it didn't feel the same. So I think there's a level of excitement, energy. The players are pumped. A lot of players now that you had the transfer portal along with super seniors, you've got a lot of older teams across the country, not so much in the ACC, but across the country, you've got older teams. And, and I think that's going to play Paris to see better basketball early in the season. Um, so I'm pumped, man. I, I can't wait to get this thing going. Tallahassee, always a tough place for opposing teams to play. And with that home crowd back, it certainly will help out Leonard Hamilton and the boys here. Uh, the oh, no, before you ask the question there, I got, I got to interrupt you there. Oh, no. We were doing an ACC show three or four weeks ago. I and I, I think it's like, the, the, Florida State Twitter just went berserker. First of all, the guy misquoted me on a tweet, which is normal because the video is right there. But, you know, he didn't use that. He used a, a tweet to say what I wanted to say. But the point I was making was Florida State has won 25 straight conference games at home. That's bananas. And they've done this in a venue that is, is raucous at times, but not every single game. And people are like, you've never been there. No, I've called games with Georgia Tech and Clemson. I've hung out with you in non-conference games, North Florida and others afterwards where it's fine, but it's not the same as Cameron every time, the advantage they have every game you go to, the advantage you have at Kansas, the advantage of other places. The fans are great, but they don't necessarily turn out every day. You know who does turn out every day? The team and Leonard. And that was the praising of the, of the fact that despite of what's going on in the atmosphere, but isn't that great, they still protect their home floor. They take pride in that. And their fans do too. I get that. My challenge was to their fans in every single game, can you equal the level of, of, the level of what you got on the court? Because when you got on the court, is one of the most special programs in the country. And I truly believe that. And the country is starting to realize that. We're trying, Dallin. We're trying. We're a football, so we're trying to embrace basketball. But no, you're right. I mean, when they when Duke shows up, when North Carolina shows up, when Virginia shows up, when Louisville shows up, it is hostile. It is loud and rowdy. Um, and I guess, yeah, the well, next no, Florida step State is to... can show up. It's just a lot of those no. schools, it's every single game. It doesn't matter right. who Louisville's playing. They're going to be there. That's the difference. And that, that level of consistency, that the consistency that your team has is, is remarkable. Well, hey, they just keep winning. So that's the, that's the biggest thing, as you said. That's a, a, a testament to what Leonard Hamilton's built here at Florida State. Song remains the same, Dallin. Uh, they were losing a lot of contributors, MJ Walker, Raekwon Gray. These are really important players from uh, the past few years and the culture that Leonard Hamilton built. But some of these returners, uh, guys like Anthony Polite, uh, Raekwon Evans, these are yeah. guys that are going to be important to the success for Florida State this season. Who Who's one of the guys that's returning that you think will be an important cog in this sort of 18-strong philosophy that Hamilton likes to roll out there? I think there's, I mean, you mentioned Polite's going to be critical. Malik Osborne's going to be really important. Uh, the guy that I'm really focused on is Raekwon Evans. He, he's a big, physical, smart guard that, that's gone through a lot of injuries through his career. I think he's ready to take the mantle from talking to the coaches and, and, and the guys around the program. It seems like he, he's ready to, to not, you're not going to be asked to play 25 or 30 minutes a game at, at Florida State. We know that. But to be able to lead them on both ends of the court, to, to be able to make the game easier at times, great for himself and his teammates, I'm excited to see him as a guy that's returning you know, hopefully stay fully healthy and be the impactful player that they, they want. And they need him to be, uh, quite frankly. Their guards are very good. Their bigs have some holes to fill. Um, but that's the thing that Leonard's done is you are not, it is not reliant on any one or two guys. And that's what makes the program special because they can sustain losses based on how they recruit, how they develop, and now through the transfer portal as well. Yeah. In terms of newcomers, uh, Dallin, they've got some really high-level blue chip freshmen that have uh, reported here to campus they've got some transfers that had to sit out last season in terms of an injection of new blood a newcomer who's somebody you're keeping an eye on for florida state if they want to make the the next step in their progress 
I'm pumped to see their, their, their freshman class. Uh, Cleveland's going to be really good. They, they, have, they have dudes that, that are going to be really good and are really good. But the guy that I think is the most interesting to me is Caleb Mills. Uh, this is a guy that Houston two years ago was the uh, conference player of the year in the American Athletic Conference and in a very good Houston team. And last year he came in, there was COVID issues, some injury issues, and he, he left after four games. He looked like a shell of himself and didn't want, didn't you know, left the situation, transferred to Florida State later on. Um, this guy is a, a guy that can, he can flat out score. He can score at all three levels. He's strong, he's smart, he's tough. But what I thought was really funny is he, from talking to Seth, his, his thing was he was saying he's the best defensive player at Florida State as they've gone through practice. Now, you told, I told Malik Osborne that at media days and told Anthony Polite that. That was not take, taken upon too, too kindly. They, that's the thing that's unique about that program, too. They take pride in that defensive side of the ball to say, to, for him to come in and say, no, I'm, I, my goal is to be the best defensive player. I'm the best defensive player. Make that stand to his teammates says a lot about how his mentality has changed, too. Because at Houston, he did guard. You can't play for Kelvin Sampson without guarding, without being mentally and physically tough. It just wasn't his forte. It wasn't what he was hanging his hat on. He was getting buckets and was being the, national, the, the league player of the year doing it. He can still do that. I just think the desire to be a defender and the desire to be the best guy on the team in that capacity to go with his, his skill set in terms of creating shots for himself. He's also gotten better distributing the ball. Um, I, I'm really excited to see Caleb Mills. I hope he's mentally and physically back to where he was when talking to the, again, talking to the staff. It seems just like that. So I think he's going to fit in really well and, and, again, take them to, to another level. Florida State's preseason ranked 20th. Uh, they're finished uh, or they're picked to finish second in the conference. They're one of only three teams, including Michigan and Gonzaga, I think, that have made it mm -hmm. to the Sweet 16 or better in the last three tournaments. You talk to everybody involved in this sport and this game down. What is the reputation of Leonard Hamilton and this program right now uh, on a national perspective? It's a good question because I do think guys like myself, and it's not just me, whether it's me or Coach Greenberg or, Car or Alfonso Ellis, you know, we've all been saying for years how good um, Florida State is is and what the program is and how Leonard has, has, has gone these 10 and 11 deep and they run a system and they do it together and selfless is their, their attitude. It is a true family vibe. We've said it over and over again. I do think the national media members that vote on these things have finally got it. Because if you look, I think it was the, the, two years ago, I was talking to Leonard before uh, the media days when the poll came out and he was joking that he was not ranked. But I said, well, Mar I, I said something about Marquette being ranked. And that's what made him laugh. It was like, isn't that crazy that Marquette is ranked, but we have all these pieces, but people don't, it's, it's really about they didn't think about who's on the team. They don't think about Florida State in that regard. Marcus Howard was coming back. He was going to be an All-American. So Marquette's in there. But if you look at those two lineups, I was like, there's just no way they compare to me at that time. And that was proven out. I mean, Florida State ended up winning the ACC that year. This is, this is the COVID year. This is 99, 19, 1920. Um, and I think that was probably the last year where people were totally in the dark, if you will. I feel like last year they started to kind of get it. And you heard it more from more people. And now I do think this preseason ranking, although I do believe they're going to be end up being a top 15 team in the country, in past years with what they lost, they wouldn't have been wouldn't even been 20. They put them at 20 now because people realize now what we're buying into here is a system, is a program, is a development of players that you may not think are really big right now. You may not know from last year's numbers or, or, or the few games that the national media that vote on these things watch of, of Florida State's. But now I think they're, you're buying into the program. So they get a 20th ranking. I do think the ACC media does respect them more, obviously. Duke, North Carolina were all higher ranked in terms of the national polls. Um, but I think the ACC media is totally aware of what Florida State is. Um, I shouldn't say that because they also voted Duke to win, which I think is egregious, but, you know, whatever. Well, you know, Coach K, farewell tour. Got to send him out on a high note, you know. Well, I don't, you know what? Know who doesn't want to do that? The other 14 teams. Yeah. So, so I, I highly doubt that's the, that's the case. But I do think – that's there. That is the, the dynamic we're talking about is is apparent right there. Like Duke lost quite a bit. Duke's upperclassmen, I don't think, are are that good. They have to be really good defensively. They have Paolo Bancaro, maybe the best freshman in the country. Trevor Keel is a really good freshman, but they're put number one or voted number one because of Duke and Coach K, not because I think objectively they're going to the season. You think they're the best team? I just I just don't I don't see it right now. But I could be wrong. We'll find out tonight in the uh, Champions Classic, at least the beginning. You know, there's a lot of Florida State fans down that have aspirations for this team to compete at the highest level, maybe finally break through, get to a Final Four for uh, Leonard Hamilton. Leonard Hamilton's going to stay true to who he is. You mentioned this is a selfless sort of team. They they run such a deep rotation. Uh, Scotty Barnes is a guy that got the fourth most minutes on this team last year. He's now in the starting line for the Toronto Raptors, might have an inside track at Rookie of the Year. Yeah. It, can he keep using this blueprint? It's got them this far. Can it get them to that next level? with this sort of rotationally heavy roster that he uses in his philosophy. And what's, I guess, maybe the good, the pros and the cons you think of said philosophy? 
to be real with you, I don't know if there are really cons because the way they do it, there are cons within programs that guys don't fully buy in. So when guys aren't are the, the attitude when they go to the bench or the negativity when they go here, like they're, they're, they're in their own heads, they've weeded that out. Those guys don't, they don't go to school there. They're just not going to recruit them. As Leonard said to me before, it's like, I'm talk, I'm recruiting certain people and then they're the player, but it's got to be a certain type of person. And then you've got to have really good players. Now in recent years, they've got to get, they've had to be able, they've been able to get Patrick Williams or Scotty Barnes, these elite talents that have the mental makeup and the physical makeup that he wants. And that's been huge. Now, that's why I don't think there's many cons to it. I do think it's the, the pros to it are the fact that they're hard to prepare for. There's a lot of guys that can hurt you. The athleticism you have, you don't see every day, especially in some – last year's team wasn't the same as we've seen in years past in terms of the defense and turning people over. But when they get in that realm, we've seen what that can do in years past. Um, so I don't think there's really downsides. The, the, the reason that they may have not gotten to a Final Four, it's really hard to get to a Final Four. And the teams they ran into – Michigan, they had turnover issues last year, and they played really poor against Michigan. They turned the ball over at times. They didn't defend at the well at the, at the level that I thought they would. The year before, they played Gonzaga, a team that went to you know went to the Final Four and was outstanding, and and, and they ran into a bit of a buzzsaw there. It was a tough game, but that, that's like you're losing to really really quality opponents. So I don't think it's about the system when you're competing and winning ACC titles. You're getting Sweet Sixteens or Elite Eights. It's just sometimes the matchup is the matchup, the game is the game. But that's the way they run their program. And because they are unique, because they are different and have a point of differentiation, I think helps him recruit the type of people and players that he wants. And as he always says, these dudes always graduate too. It's, it's everything you want in a program. It's, it's outstanding. That said, Dallin, what do you think is the ceiling for this Florida State team this 21-22 season? The ceiling? The ceiling is an ACC champion. The ceiling, not this is a ceiling, but the ACC championship, uh, regular season, obviously the tournament, they could win that as well. In terms of the NCAA tournament, we'll see how they develop. But this is a team that I don't think I would look and say, hey, they're Final Four good. But at this point in the year, this is the weird thing about this year, man. With so many transfers, I'm just excited. I'm interested to see teams play. Because you talk to all these coaches and you see all these pieces come together. But until you actually see it, and coaches are too. They see it in exhibitions and they start to get a little glean. But when the lights are actually on, how do you perform? Like, how do you actually play? My coach freshman year, Armand Hill, used to be like, you suck in practice. But you had gamer. You had gamer. So you started starting because like, I was horrible in practice, but when the game was on, I at least played relatively well when the game was going on. So that was that's that is a differentiation factor. So I don't know what we're looking at across the country right now. I think I have a better sense in the ACC. I'm obviously closer to some of those coaches, and I've seen some of these guys a little bit more often. But I think right now that they're a team that will compete to get to a Sweet 16, at Elite Eight, maybe the Final Four. That remains to be seen. We'll see how they look. But we'll see how some of these other programs look that have changed so much, whether it's, you know, Kentucky's bringing in a bunch of transfers. Texas got a whole new team. Memphis has all these young dudes. I mean, you can just go down the list of, you know, who's on the roster, but what does that really mean in terms of a team concept? TBD. But Florida State's got championship level aspirations across everything. Florida State, again, opens the season ranked 20th. They'll take on Penn Wednesday at 9 p.m. here in Tallahassee. Hit the thumbs up on the way out. We certainly do appreciate you tuning in. Uh, that's Dallin Cuff, everybody. He's an analyst for ESPN and the ACC Network. He's also my good friend. He also has a bunch of other stuff. You do soccer and everything, too, man. So I hate to sell you short, but you're just a basketball analyst. Tell Adrian and the kid I said hi, man. Will do. The kid, Lyra. I will do. <laughs>